Mansfield. Raoul Julia. It's not Raoul Julia, nor Raoul Julia, and certainly isn't Raoul Julia. I learned how to pronounce it from the man himself, and... Raoul Julia. I'd like to apologise to any hard of hearing viewers as pronunciation-based scripting doesn't translate too well to subtitles. Anyway, Raoul, he is a man known in memeing circles for loving his Tuesdays, and he's a man you absolutely would not associate with any video games. A traditional old-school actor of some repute who dedicated his life to thespianisming and humanitarian work. Video games were precisely the sort of thing that in the 80s and 90s would have been below him. Naturally then, Raoul Julia was in five games. Sort of. It's pushing it a bit, I'll readily admit, but to me there are five distinct games, and within those five a few different versions of those games, that feature the man we know as Gomez Bison. First up was, it won't surprise you to hear, The Addams Family. Based on the 1991 film of the same name, ah, uh, that just sounds like I'm reading Wikipedia. Try again. It was an exciting computer game full of sprites and action that took everything great about the super motion picture version of The Addams Family and threw it into a few different versions of games based on the 1991 film of the same name. The Addams Family came out on plenty of devices. The SNES and Mega Drive, of course, the Amiga, Commodore 64 and Spectrum, Amstrad CPC, am I listing them all? I may as well have said a bunch of them. NES, Master System, Game Gear and Game Boy. Oh, and uh, Atari ST, not that ST owners deserve a mention. Amiga for life, yeah! While there were differences between the 8 and 16-bit versions of the game, the general premise remained the same throughout. Control Gomez Adams, or Raul, as he made his way around various areas in and around the Adams Mansion. They were all platformers and all featured a vaguely non-linear approach to their level design alongside the ability to use items and game power-ups as you progressed. So sort of like a spooky Metroid. Except for the fact that the Metroid games were and are good, and the Adams Family games based on the 1991 film of the same name were and are a bit pump. There was potential there, certainly, and I can still hear the bleating of the Amiga magazines at the time. Desperate as they were to have a game anywhere near as good as any of the ubiquitous platformers on consoles of the day, claiming the Adams Family a triumph. It wasn't. It was loose and sloppy in its handling, with Gomez near uncontrollable half the time, and yes, a slippy slidey ice world made it all the worse. Collision detection was just off, meaning the game was harder than it needed to be. Jumping was imprecise, meaning the game was harder than it needed to be. Enemies would strike quickly and from nowhere, as would traps, meaning the game was harder than it needed to be. Look, I played through one section of the Mega Drive version using a 99 lives cheat, and it took me about 40 lives to defeat the boss. I could have done it sooner, were I playing on a CRT telly, were I paying more attention, and were I 25 years younger, but the fact is this was a poor selection of games based on the 1991 film of the same name. Additionally, there were games based on the 1991 film of the same name in Tiger LCD handheld format, which, on seeing it, hits me with such a powerful nostalgia I want to curl up into a ball and whimper. How the hell I enjoyed games like these as a kid I will never know, but mm, there you go. And finally was a version for the TurboGrafx CD, or PC Engine CD, or whatever that thing wanted to be called. Rather than playing as Gomez, as in the other non-LCD versions, you played as the family's lawyer, attempting to break into the house's vault using an umbrella that fires projectiles. It was, safe to say, a, a whole big pile of shit. But it was different shit. Hubert. Gomez, Raul, took the back seat in this follow-up Adams Family game based on the follow-up Adams Family movie of 1993 fame. And just like the second movie was better than the first, the second game was also better than the first, lifting heavily from The Legend of Zelda as it did. This time around the game's audience was limited by only releasing on a couple of home consoles and abandoning home computers entirely, but given it was 1995 and the PlayStation and Saturn hadn't yet taken over things, it was an understandable approach. And differences between the values versions, that's SNES and Mega Drive, if you weren't paying attention a short while ago to that title card I meticulously crafted with real artistic talent, the differences were, well, there, but not major. The Sega version looked muddier, while the Nintendo game carried richer colours, and the music was different between each. It, uh, it was genuinely nothing of real note between the two. 
Anyway, the game itself was pretty good in that we're ripping off a much better, much more polished, much more carefully crafted game in Zelda sort of way. You hunt for missing baby Pubert. Pubert. Saw so you taking Uncle Fester through various different areas in and around the mansion grounds of Pubert's kidnapper, picking up items and powers as you went that would allow you to go back and access previously inaccessible areas before picking up the Triforce and saving Zelda. And, well, not that, but, you know, you get the picture. It was... okay. It was pretty good. Decent? Yeah, pretty good. A solid adventure game that could last a dozen or so hours and a nice stopgap filler title while you were waiting for the next proper Zelda game to release. Or the next game featuring Raoul Julia, of course. Capcom farmed out a Street Fighter game based on the biggest hit film of 1994. Well, one of the biggest hit films of 1994. Well, a film that came out in 1994. Yes, Street Fighter the movie, the arcade version specifically, was made by Incredible Technologies, studio behind classic arcade brawlers, time killers and Bloodstorm. Well, arcade brawlers, I'm gonna stop the, well, joke now. Anyway, what in bejesus was this all? It was Street Fighter done a bit differently and featuring Raul Julia. Well, I stop that. What I mean is, it technically featured Raul Julia in that it featured archive footage from the movie the game was based on, with Raul in it, and the character M. Bison he played in the film was there in the game and was based on his portrayal, but it was actually stuntman Darko Tuscan, Julia's stunt performer, who did the performance capture for inclusion in the game. Ah, well, I'm willing to live on in technicalities and well actuallys. Street Fighter the movie, the arcade version, was a surprisingly forward-thinking fighting game. It leaned heavily on juggle-based combos, introduced a form of parrying that wouldn't be seen properly in the series till Street Fighter 3, and included counters and reversals and other such things that became standard fare in the series later on. It was also objectively a terrible game, of course, and a stain on the entire history of Street Fighter. Clunky and awkward, it relied on the bombast of its presentation and the fact you could play as an oiled-up Kylie Minogue to carry it, rather than on being an actual good game. Not even the might of Gomez Bison could save the arcade incarnation of the movie, but there was hope for the home port at least. Because yes, the home port of Street Fighter the movie was actually a completely different game. Same setup in that it was a one-on-one -on -one fighting game with digitized Street Fighter characters and special moves and Julia only really popping up in footage from the film, but a different game other than that. See, Capcom had taken charge of the home ports for PlayStation and Saturn and, not wanting things to go the same route as the garbage arcade game, instead opted to right-click on all the assets from the arcade, click copy, then highlight all the assets in the folder titled Street Fighter 2 Turbo, right-click and select paste. It was Street Fighter 2 Turbo with digitized characters from the Street Fighter film is, is, is what I'm saying. Significantly better than the arcade game, Street Fighter the movie, the home port edition, was... Uh, not great still. It suffered janky animation, plenty of slowdown, and a general feel of things being quickly and cheaply cobbled together to make a necessary home tie-in for the game version of the film version of the game. It was roundly shrugged at and left to the annals of history, every now and then popping its head above water in a retro-focused YouTube channel so someone can sneer at it. Not me, though. I don't think it was very good, but also I can't sneer at something with the wonderful Raul Julia's face in it, even if technically you weren't playing as him. The list was actually set to end with that last entry, but then I had a brainwave and decided to include the best game ever to feature Raul Julia in this now extended list, because it actually came to us in video game form, first in 2015 and then again a couple of months ago as I write this in 2023. Yes, the Adams Family Pinball Table. The best-selling table of all time and a personal favourite of mine thanks to a childhood of Saturday evenings spent in the family room of our local pub which had the machine for a fair old while. It also had the Turtles arcade game at one point, but well, that's another story for another time. Pinball is not a video game, though. It has elements of video gaminess, and some might argue it is, but the wrong. Pinball ain't fit for this list. Step forward the Pinball Arcade, which in 2015 released a video gamely digitized version of the Adams Family Pinball for us all to download and enjoy. And just like the Star Trek The Next Generation table released for the same digital pinballing platform, my and entirely ignored it for some reason. 
I say for some reason, I mean because I've always been much more a fan of the far more, dare I say it, video gamey approach to digital pinball espoused by Zen Studios' series of pinball releases. And its most recent pinballing platform, Pinball FX, while I might be pissed off at it trying to charge me for tables I first bought over a decade ago yet again, received the latest digital port of the Adams Family Pinball in February 2023. And there he is, right there. Raul Julia is right there, smack bang on the marquee, his digitized voice living on through the snippets the man himself recorded with such gusto for the physical pinball game, and now recreated in video game form, forever living on as a thing I'll get eternally pissed off with because the gutters are way too ball sucky any for my liking on this table. Yeah, well. It's a Stone Cold classic and I would love to get a physical version of the table, but right now the cheapest one I can find is a few hundred quid. Oh good god, wait, what? Oh, and the Adams Family Pinball is on freeware platform Visual Pinball as well, but I'm not counting that as it's fan-made, so unofficial. Now technically, technically, this means a mild-mannered Puerto Rican star of stage and screen, a thespian of some repute and a man who supported up-and-coming Latino actors until his dying day, who devoted his life to the craft of acting, has featured in more video games than the muscles from Brussels, the man of a thousand roundhouse kicks and that bloke who had an awful and awkward cameo on Friends once, Jean-Claude Van Damme. That is, if you count it as two Adams Family games, two Street Fighter the movie releases, and one sort of bundle of digitized video game versions of a pinball machine, compared with Jean-Claude's two Street Fighters, a Universal Soldier, and a Time Cop. It's fair logic to me, and I'm sticking with it. Plus, it means categorically not an action hero Raul Julia featured in more video games than that awful sack of shit Steven Seagal. So there's another feather in the dearly departed's cap. It also means Kylie Minogue has more of a presence in video games than Seagal, given she was an actual playable character in Street Fighter the movie, and some of her songs have been in karaoke and dance games. Take that, you weird running final option garbage human Steven. Anyway, where was I? Where was I? Oh, oh yeah, I, I, I doubt Raul played any of these games. There's nowhere else to go with this video, so I'm going to look at other actors in games and do something else. At some point. Thanks to my patrons on Patreon for helping me learn to pronounce Roll Yulia. I swear, when I say your names aloud every night, I get them all exactly right. I'm off to marvel at Luis Guzman's portrayal of Gomez, which I genuinely think is really good, but maybe it's because Morticia stood next to him most of the time in Wednesday and that'd lift anyone's spirits. Bye.